stay here and uh, we have an interesting topic indeed which is trading oil fundamental and technical analysis for this commodity oil is a kind of unique financial instrument it's rather um, its dynamics is rather exciting and uh, today we will discuss specifics of um, analyzing oil if uh, we look at the chart and we will do that shortly today we will see that um, indeed during the recent months oil uh, has been on the great upside and um, as a result the question is whether this rally in commodity is going to continue or not i remind you that we do have um, a chat here and you are very welcome to share your opinion about this thing and now we will um, do the analytical stuff we will start with fundamental analysis i think that it is rather logical and um, well as an asset um, a commodity the price of oil depends on supply and demand and it is natural to analyze the situation this way to have a look at supply factors than at demand factors and see whether we have more factors which support the upside or more factors which support the downside in oil so um here are some factors for oil supply maybe we can think of other factors as well uh, of course here are the most evident ones and i'd like to point out um, the fact that if we speak about different factors which do have an impact on oil prices if we don't speak about the medium term or the long term situation but about the short term the market tends to pay attention to some of the factors more than other factors. And uh, although everything is important, sometimes uh, traders just get fixated on uh, some specific uh, things, specific news. And uh, as a result, this uh, news make the prices move. So uh, factors for supply um, are Firstly, and the greatly production cuts by the oil uh, exporters, uh, by the largest oil producers, the OPEC nations. And uh, of course, this factor is kind of what we have heard a lot uh, in the recent months. But actually, this is the factor which really is uh, acting and is having an impact on the market. We can remember that. Um, the organization of petroleum exporting countries has been trying to control the price for some time and uh, then it uh, tried to do that after the great slump of oil prices in 2015 and 2016 then efforts didn't pay back much um, oil remained under pressure uh, this time, uh, this year, however, oil exporters are quite successful and if we try to estimate the general sentiment of the market regarding this point, uh, we will be able to see that the market indeed believes in the ability of these uh, countries to comply with their pledge to uh, limit their production. So. Um, just a moment I had here somewhere a list of things I wanted to tell you here on my data so um, there is this wonderful infographics prepared by Bloomberg they uh, did a wonderful stuff and this is actually the fresh data about uh, the compliance of OPEC countries with oil cuts agreements. So you can see that the figures here are for February. And if we look at the overall picture, we will see that um, in uh, February, uh, not all countries of the OPEC um, did comply with uh, the pledge. Actually, if we take OPEC, only four out of 11 countries complied. However, the overall uh, compliance rate among the OPEC was 
106%, so they kind of over complied because some nations did uh, cut production more than the others. So the bloc's leader, Saudi Arabia, kind of took on itself the uh, weight of these production cuts and acted as a leader of this uh, union and as a result managed to um, achieve the uh, production cuts numbers we are uh, seeing here. Uh, on this picture, we do have um, OPEC plus, which means that uh, here we have um, the countries which are allies of uh, OPEC bloc, but um, do not officially um, participate in this bloc. And um, as for these other countries, the non-OPEC countries, half of the countries reduced their oil output as planned. And as a result, their overall compliance was, well, um, kind of uh, acceptable to the market. We can see that. Another interesting uh, charts by Bloomberg, I liked a lot. Um, they have prepared this thing. We can see the dynamics of brand price during the last two years. And uh, we can see that against the dynamics of OPEX total production and uh, US total production as well. So of course, as um, the market believes in uh, oil exporters in OPEC and efforts to limit um, production, oil price is going up and that makes uh, US production increase naturally, makes American uh, producers to return to the market and to turn on more oil rigs because uh, production becomes uh, profitable for them. So this is um, the situation when uh, oil market is trying to find balance between these different sources of production. But um, apparently uh, we can make a conclusion that um, if we look at the sources of oil supply, this limit by oil exporters is um, kind of prevailing factor at the market. Um, it has been since um, the end of last year, and the, um, the forecast is that it will remain so uh, in the upcoming months as well. So um, if we have a look at other factors which are related to uh, supply, another thing to mention is the US sanctions on Iran and Venezuela. And actually now we hear more and more news that America is considering not only maintaining these sanctions, but adding new sanctions. And of course, this talk um, has a negative impact on uh, the market's expectations about supply, and as a result, a positive impact on the price of oil, because, well, the fewer barrels we get at the market, the better for the oil price. This is the um, basic law of uh, supply and demand. As for negative factors um, on the supply side, well, here um, I mentioned the fact that um, Donald Trump, the US president, um, from time to time urges OPEC nations to increase production because he is um, not satisfied with uh, this increase in oil prices. So he uses his uh, main uh, communication source, Twitter, to just um, convey this position. However, uh, well, um, it happens that the actions of the United States do um, provoke the increases of oil prices through the sanctions. So um, it's kind of difficult to imagine that uh, OPEC nations will uh, listen to what Trump says in his Twitter and adjust policy on that part. So. This is a mildly negative uh, factor, but 
it doesn't look uh, serious at this point. And um, there is an increase in uh, crude oil inventories in the United States. Actually, uh, the data about uh, rising inventories came out this week. But we see that uh, for now that doesn't um, make the market concerned about uh, the increased supply much because, well, um, it is kind of uh, expected from the United States uh, that uh, there the supply will increase. So um, I just uploaded some recent charts for you to, you know, to see and to make sure that everything is as I say. So at the top, we can see that US crude oil inventories um, rose. The latest column is the data uh, released this week. And um, it was expected that actually there will be a decline in American oil inventories, but uh, well, turned out to be um, an increase here. Um, to the right, we can see uh, U.S. Baker Hughes oil recount. It um, declined a bit from uh, the highs which were seen last year, but still uh, we can see that a lot of um, rigs uh, does exist in the United States is in operation and is um, producing oil. And the final chart here to consider is um, the chart from CFTC, Commodity Futures Trading Commission, uh, which uh, provides us with the data about the positions of uh, large speculators um, and uh, the net contracts uh, on different financial assets. As for crude oil, we can see that speculative positions are in the net positive territory. And after some uh, bottom, uh, which uh, was formed at the end of last year and the beginning of this year. Recent weeks show that uh, the market gets more and uh, more positive about oil. It is natural as the price takes, um, takes away important resistance levels we see. So um, naturally more and more speculators uh, join the bullish market and as uh, for now, these um, net positions are not at the highest levels seen um, within the recent year. It can be seen as a sign that um, the market can still continue adding these uh, bullish positions. And the time for uh, reversal, the time for um, covering of these short position positions hasn't um, come yet. This is the main conclusion we can make. So marginally, everyone now sees that uh, the factors regarding oil supply are uh, more positive than negative for um, oil prices. Only um, the increase of US production and inventories is somewhat worrisome. But um, if we see the situation as a whole, well, uh, here the picture is more or less towards the uh, limited supply and higher oil prices. If we uh, try to estimate what uh, the market thinks, what experts think, well, um, have a look at this information that Wall Street mm, Journal uh, made survey of analysts, not so many analysts, um, I would say by analysts from some large financial institutions, 12 of them, and um, in February they expected that the average oil price in 2019 will equal to uh, 67. Um, in March that estimate increased to 68. Not a big increase for sure, but um, still a positive uh, trend in expectations, taking into account the fact that this is an um, average number that is, well, a sign that experts are um, optimistic. This is how we can interpret this. So um, various things we have discussed relative to 
supply, what is um, happening with demand? Because, well, demand is as important as supply because um, however small supply is getting, um, if we don't see uh, that demand, which is equal or prevailing, that uh, won't be um, a positive sign for the prices. So is uh, this positive view confirmed uh, when we have a look at the demand side of things? Well, uh, once again, several factors here. Uh, if we see, if we have a look at what is important right now, then the market is surely focused on the trade tongues between the United States and China. And although if you scan through the news, you will be able to read a lot of different headlines about that. So uh, they are almost at the agreement, although serious uh, differences in opinion still remain, although uh, the agreement is tomorrow. So the situation is a bit unclear, but all in all, um, there are reasons to believe that uh, these trade talks represent a big project of uh, Donald Trump and his administration. The efforts uh, into these talks are really big. So I think that uh, there are reasons to expect a positive outcome there and the market thinks so as well. Um, in the near term, the expectations will likely remain positive. And uh, we expect some news about the trade talks uh, in the first half of April. Uh, no dates, uh, but uh, something like that. So uh, some short term positive sign for oil and the actual agreement, although it is largely priced in, um, it is not priced in uh, enough because uncertainty still remains. So it will continue to um, add its positive um, thing to the oil, to oil price if um, everything is resolved successfully. And another factor, the upcoming end of the refinery maintenance season um, will also make an impact because physical oil uh, does, uh, does influence the market and the demand for it. So, um, another positive thing to have a look at. Um, negative factor for the price on the demand side, well, only one uh, factor which just came to my mind uh, right away, uh, concerns about global economic growth. This is a serious factor and um, we see that the market attitude towards that changes just um, every uh, day, so one day uh, the there is some positive uh, release and everyone is more or less happy. But uh, for a long period of time, there were significant concerns that there is a slowdown in China and in other regions of the world. Have a look at Europe, have a look at Germany, which is now losing its uh, pace. So um, this is a serious factor, but it is kind of, well, long-term factor because uh, we see that it didn't actually prevent oil from rising in the recent months. So uh, despite the fact that concerns about global growth were rather intense. Um, however, positive things do affect uh, the price on the day-to-day -day basis. Um, and as uh, this week, China released uh, some good manufacturing um, activity data. This cheered up uh, the markets and cheered up oil as well. So some short term um, impact from that will be felt by oil prices. So if you are an active trader, day trader, intraday trader, well, uh, pay uh, special attention to the um, indicators which are closely related to global economic growth performance, China and its various indexes, GDP and so on, uh, the key indicator of performance uh, in, the, in Europe and in the United States as well, uh, the most important indicators now about that um, is, are what we should follow here. 
So uh, making a conclusion about uh, factors for demand, well, um, it's um, in the near term, in the medium term, uh, we see more positive stuff than negative. So unless we get some really, really bad data from all over the world, um, we won't worry about um, the negative impacts on global economy and negative impacts on oil demand. And after all, with the loose monetary policy of central banks, uh, well, um, it is uh, really, really hard to imagine the uh, worst scenario with global economy. So um, there are reasons to believe, I think, that the demand for oil at least won't uh, deteriorate. That is a good thing for the market right now. So um, if we combine uh, the things we have talked about supply, the things we have talked about demand, well, um, the logical reasons uh, show us that still oil has uh, opportunity to get to higher levels. So no um, obstacles for that unless uh, there is some uh, major Brexit shock, major shock related to um, to global economy. This is the scenario. Of course, black swan events are always possible, and that is why we re need risk management in our trade. But um, the analysis is telling us this. I'll try to share my screen now in order to have a look at the chart with you. Just a moment. Um, just a moment, please. Yeah, I see how it is done. Just a minute, here is some, it seems some download I have to do in order to share. My screen. So guys, if you have any, um, questions or things to share, please, you are very welcome. Okay, I think that I am sharing my screen, right? Okay. Okay, so having a look at the chart of brand oil, uh, we always start with some big time frames here. We see that uh, the market was on the upside until the crunch time, which uh, took place in autumn of 2018, when oil went significantly down and now we are uh, recovering and visually we have retraced about 50% of that decline to the upside. Um, if we use the Fibonacci retracement here to see the precise retracement levels, we can see that we are already past 50% here and on the way to the next level to 61.8% um, Fibonacci, which is um, located well below $73 a barrel for brand oil. 
the most significant thing here at the chart is this inverted head and shoulders pattern. And uh, well, these patterns, uh, what I like about them is that they do have an effect because uh, they are very recognizable to traders all over the world. And as a result, they uh, work, they make the price uh, really, uh, really increase. Uh, and uh, they uh, produce the signals which are seen by everyone and followed by everyone here. So we see that on the weekly chart of Brent, the uh, price is uh, close to the uh, level of 50 day moving average. This is the brown line. Um, it uh, is going to provide resistance around 70.60 uh, level. Um, however, this inverted head and shoulders still provides us with bullish potential. Still, uh, the fact that we are over 50 uh, percent Fibonacci uh, provides us with uh, the opportunity to visit the next Fibonacci level. Uh, so it, the natural targets here are provided by the weekly chart. Although the moving averages, the 50 moving average, the uh, 100 moving average and 200 moving average are horizontal. So um, they uh, do not show some excessive momentum. They do not show that oil is... Um, like uh, ready to push upward with great speed. Switching to the daily chart, we see the reflection of that. So um, the daily day-to-day -day dynamics of oil is kind of slow uh, after we breached the resistance to the upside in the middle of February, we were slowly but surely crawling to the upside. On the daily chart, we can see that the pair uh, now met resistance in form of 200 day moving average around uh, 69, 64 level. Naturally, it holds the prices and um, prevents them from rising um, just now, and uh, it may take some time before oil um, gets higher. So we have a look at 70 mark um, as the main resistance to watch in the near term. We will watch for the fix above this level to open uh, the way towards the, the levels we saw on the weekly chart. The fact that 50-day moving average went above 100-day moving average is uh, positive for the price. However, once again, we see here that um, the moving averages are almost horizontal, and this shows that the market really, really um, lacks this uh, speed and momentum. So um, I think what will happen here is that oil will continue um, this uh, trading in this fashion with the slow uh, way to the upside, maybe occasional days where we see higher movement of the price, bigger movement of the price. But on average, um, this uh, daily candlesticks uh, will remain small until um, we get news about the US-China trade deal and then uh, price action may become more and more lively. So um, to return here and to see which is the really big potential, what is the upside Here, the fact that we have returned within the previous um, uptrend um, area after the plunge below, which happened um, at the end of last year, at the beginning of this year, I think that really uh, brings uh, 
the possibility to of increase towards levels around 80 in uh, motion. Um, I wouldn't say that we will, would be able to go higher than 80 because I think that uh, levels will um, lead to increased production in the United States, yet uh, more uh, to commence from Donald Trump and uh, general concerns from oil importing countries, uh, which we may materialize. So um, I think that 80 is kind of the ceiling for oil, although, well, anything can happen there and the market may become too optimistic. Um, as for support, uh, the main ones surely is located somewhere around 65. Uh, we will look as analysts, maybe they will revise their average forecast for oil, uh, which is currently at 68 for the year. But, uh, well, as we started the year lower, naturally to get this average price, the price will need to go substantially higher. Let's have a look at the chart of WTI, uh, here the picture is more or less similar. Uh, the price already reached a resistance of uh, 50 week moving average. And uh, we see that uh, WTI was uh, gaining more rapidly than Brent. Actually, it rose by 37% since the start of the year, while Brent increased by 29%. Um, so technical analysis here is quite similar, I think. Um, switching to the daily chart, uh, we can also apply Fibonacci in order to get some resistance levels visible. And you can see that dynamics of brand is sure, uh, dynamics of WTI, sorry, is more lively. Here, the price is already above 200 uh, day moving average, which is acting as support around 61.50. And the next target of 61.8 Fibonacci is closer inside. Uh, so, um, oil will continue going there um, more rapidly. Well, on the four hour chart, we can see that the price uh, went kind of away the moving averages here, which are in positions for the uptrend. So some retracement to the downside is surely possible. So we will be watching for uh, support levels uh, I've mentioned at the daily moving average and also a support of highs, which we are seeing at um, the end of March and the moving averages here with the previous Fibonacci level to act as support and uh, potentially good areas to join the bullish market with higher targets. So, um, guys, this is what I wanted to share with you today in the webinar, which was devoted to oil. If uh, you have any questions to me, you are very welcome. And um, it would be interesting to know whether you like uh, analytical webinars more or you would like to see more educational webinars here at Tradimo because um, I can do both and, well, just trying to choose the topics for other times uh, we will be talking. I would also like to remind you that Tradimo has this premium program where you will be able to get uh, live online webinars and personalized learning support, as well as uh, various courses and certificates. So uh, please uh, remember about this option and consider joining. And uh, well, I thank you for your attention today and I hope that um, 
I managed to create a system in your mind about the important news and factors which are related to oil price. So if you have no questions, then I'll just wish you all the best and uh, say goodbye until the other webinars at Trading World.